This is the easiest sugarcane farm that works in both Bedrock and Java Edition. A couple years ago, I posted a sugarcane farm tutorial on the easiest sugarcane farm ever, but since then, there's been some updates to the design. So today, I'm going to share with you guys the easiest and most simple sugarcane farm that you can build right when you start your world. There's obviously designs out there for crazy and huge sugarcane farms, but realistically, you never need anything more than this. And what's great about this design is you can expand it to be as big or as small as you want. So let's get into it. For the example farm, I'm going to make it five blocks wide, so you need everything you see here in this chest. The building blocks and glass are sort of optional, you only need a few building blocks. And for this farm tutorial, we're going to grow the sugarcane on top of mud, you can use grass or sand if you want, but you might lose some drops. Since mud isn't a full block, you can actually put a hopper underneath mud, and it will be able to collect drops from the mud block. So we're going to take our mud and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then place a wall of building blocks one block behind the mud. In the little gap, fill it up with water, and then place your sugar cane on top of the mud. Now place a block on top of the water, and on top of this block, place your pistons facing the sugar cane. Right behind the pistons, place your building block, and on top of the pistons, place the observer, making sure that the eyes of the observer are facing forward. So you wanna place the block intentionally on the edge of the piston, just like this. You'll know it's facing forward when you see the little eyes facing forward. And then right behind the observers, place your redstone. Now, this farm is done just like this. You could pretty much leave it like this if you wanted to and just stand in front of it to collect the drops, but we're gonna create an automatic system so that we can AFK. So last time I made this farm, some people had an issue where the drops weren't going into the chest, so I'm gonna show you guys how to avoid that problem. Wherever you have your chest, make sure you have one hopper facing directly into the chest. That means you are shifting and clicking directly onto the chest. Then for the rest of the hoppers, make sure they are facing into the hopper that faces into the chest. That way all the drops will funnel into the middle hopper and then eventually funnel right into the chest. You can expand this chest if you want or even place another chest underneath using another hopper just so you get some more drops. Now what I like to do just to contain everything is place some building blocks just like this and maybe another layer right here. And then right up front, place your glass. What's nice about glass is not only can you see the farm, uh, but also, you can open a chest even if glass is on top of it. Just like that. Now, as the sugar cane grows, the observer will see that it grows, triggering the observer to push the pistons, breaking the sugar cane, putting it all in the hoppers, and eventually into your chest. Now, a lot of people have also had the issue where this triggering isn't happening, so just make sure you have the piston, a building block behind it, on top of that building block of redstone, and the observer facing directly where the sugar cane is. What's great about this farm is you can also make it one block large. Right over here, I have an example of this where it's very tiny. There's no really expensive resources required to make this. You can make this not long after booting into a brand new world. The only sort of expensive thing is the hopper, but all you need is a few pieces of iron. Even if you build this one block farm, if you AFK for long enough, you'll get all the sugar cane you need. This is great for transforming into paper to get emeralds, or for making your books for enchantment tables. Now, if you want to really increase the rates on this farm and have it running 24-7, what you can do is build it within the spawn chunks of your world. That means go to the spawn point of your world, around the coordinates 0, 0, and build this farm within that chunk. That way, the chunk is always loaded in, sugarcane will always be growing, and the farm will always be producing huge amounts of sugarcane for you, and it'll help you get really rich. Now, another reason this farm is undefeatable is because it's easily stackable. All you have to do is repeat the same exact process we did before, except right on top of the first layer, and you can make a second layer of this farm. Now, to make this farm expandable, what you're unfortunately going to need to do is break the glass here, and in this front row, place a row of hoppers and maybe move your chest one block forward. So when you have that finished, it should look like this, and just place your glass one block forward. This is because the entities won't drop through the mud automatically. It only drops through if there's a hopper underneath. So we need to let the drops fall another way. Now, when making this farm stackable, it's great because you can make this farm as wide as you want and as tall as you want. You can make it a chunk long and a chunk tall if you want, all the way from the build height to bedrock. The only downside about this design is that there is occasionally some drop loss on the higher levels, but honestly, I have to say it's worth it because this is by far the easiest, cheapest, and quickest sugarcane farm to make. Plus, the design is so simple that once you make it once, you'll always remember it and you'll never have to come back for another tutorial again. So, I hope you all found this entertaining and useful. If you did find it useful, please consider leaving a comment. 
liking and subscribing as it really does help me out. If you guys have any questions or problems with the farm, please comment down below and I will try to help you all out. I really wanted to make this update video because you can make the farm a little bit better now with the inclusion of mud and I thought it was time for an update. But that's all for this video. My name is Jay Wisp, and I will see you guys all in the next one.